Jeffrey, you know what really grinds my gears? What? When I go into a board game store, yeah, we do and that. I'm looking at this beautiful game on the shelf, yes. and it costs like 50 bucks, and mm -hmm. I buy the game, yeah. I get home, and I open the game, and yes. it's just like an empty box with like 100 cards in it. Yeah, that sucks. I don't know why publishers decide to do that, but it's infuriating when you misrepresent your game like that. Maybe it's to make the box look bigger. I, I don't know, mm -hmm. but either way, it drives me nuts. Today, we're talking about our board gaming pet peeves. Okay, so before we get into the top 10, just a couple mm -hmm. of honorable mentions. Firstly, uh, when rule books don't have an index. Yes, yes. It's really tough when yeah. like you have a new game and you're trying to find like a specific keyword mm -hmm. and you just have mm -hmm. no idea where in the rule book to look. Then yeah, it's 100%. Just, it's like it's one extra sheet. I don't know what that costs in pennies. I imagine it's a fraction of a penny. I'm willing to pay for it. it. Yes, absolutely. And the other is it's only an inconvenience to some people, but it's when colors are too close together. Yes, 100%. Like, like a red and an orange or like mm -hmm. a green mm -hmm. and a dark green or a blue Or like and a light teal. purple and like an off-white beige-ish thing. Yeah. It, yeah it's yeah. happening. Okay. And with that, Jeffrey. Yes. Number 10 on this list is going to tackle and attack the Kickstarter and GameFound community aggressively. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is... Good old crowdfunding that we Big love boxes. When the box is so big, it doesn't fit into a Calax. And it mm -hmm. makes the game harder to set up. Yes. Like, I understand yes. your big box holds all your expansions in one yep. place. Yep. It's organized okay-ish. But, like, if your game is going to take you an hour to set up instead of a half an hour mm -hmm. because you have 17 expansions to sift through and separate yes. game base yep. game stuff out of, get bent. Why if, are we using a big box? If I want to run Everdell with a group of people who have never played it before and I have it in the big box, I should be able to get that core game out very Faster. easily at the beginning. It should be the last yeah. thing to go back in after you've played with it. Totally. It's an, it's an unpopular opinion, but there's a new game that came out called Anunnaki. It's a 4X. And what mm -hmm. they did is, like, they did trays for, like, Base box or base game, base game, and then Ooh. expansion, then expansion, then expansion. I like separate. That. That's perfect. Yeah, Vindication did really well with that too. Yep. Where the base yep. game is in one tray. Like, mm -hmm. do that if you're gonna do a big box. 100%. Don't just like slam components for different like expansions yep. in different yep. spots. Like, work with a game trays or someone like that, and just get your game. Organized Think about properly. the owner or user experience of yeah. somebody who's actually going through that box. Right. Totally. We want everything to fit in there, and we're not. I don't think it's asking too much to try and make it that easy step of setting up that game. So next up, and these are going to be an increasing criticality or uh, an annoyance. Or annoyance <laughs> or like, as we go, I'm going to get more and more pissed off. And you'll see. Next is I'm a sleever pretty religiously. A hundred percent. It really bugs yep. me when companies use non-standard card sizes. Yeah. What I mean yep. to say is like, okay, there's, there's bridge size, there's poker size. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. mini Euro, mini American. I think that should be the statute of limitations on what a company can use to yeah. publish a game. Yeah. I shouldn't have to have 17 different card sizes in my collection, like for sleeves. Mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. just be able to have like five. If companies want to do cards that aren't a standard size, one of the ones that you listed, then offer the sleeves to be bought with the game. Yeah. And have a lot it come of times with they don't. It, yeah. Right? It's ridiculous. I'm okay with paying an extra five, ten dollars or whatever to get all the sleeves for that game that yes. will fit perfectly. Or even better, and here's an inside scoop for you, all publishers who are on Kickstarter. I will pay like 10 bucks per 40 or 50 cards for the ability to purchase PVC cards. 100%. Like, 100%. oh my gosh, for certain games, yeah. especially like for deck building games. A like lot Imperium, of people are like, going to disagree with us on this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Or like, they're uh, the whole other way. Or like, like trick taking games yeah. or like any, because like uh, for trick taking games, how many times have I bought Scout? Because yep. like the cards yep. get worn out really quick. They don't shuffle properly. We play it a lot. Also, yep. I understand the argument of like, okay, it's not as good for the environment. Also, most people, including myself, are going to sleeve them anyway. Yes. Yes, they are. And it's a deluxification that yes. companies should be capitalizing yes. on. If you're Awakened Realms or something and you happen mm -hmm. to see this, just offer it on your next campaign. 100%. The people will like. buy it. What percentage yeah. of people take the upgrade? That's mm -hmm. what I want. Yes. Okay. So number eight is a thematic choice that designers or publishers make. This one really to try me. to make you feel like you're like more in more the immersed. Universe of yeah. The game. Yeah. It doesn't make me feel that way. It just no. pisses me off. It frustrates me a lot when I'm it's trying to teach people. It's when you invent and reinvent a word mm -hmm. that means something that we already know. Yep. And don't like, have a quick reference. Like the biggest example of this that I could think of off the top of my head is Innovation. It's a card game, and it's like, instead of play a card, it's meld a card. Mm -hmm. Instead of spread mm -hmm. cards, it's splay cards. Mm -hmm. Like, just, why? A lot of, lot of companies are guilty for it. Even, like, placing a meeple, like, deploying a meeple, or mm -hmm. provisioning a mm -hmm. meeple, or instead of, like, returning a meeple, it's, like, recuperate, or, like, reinforce, or reinstate, or whatever. Now we're on to number seven. Mm. And number seven is when an amazing designer, an mm -hmm. amazing artist has taken the time to publish amazing iconography. Yes. Like Ian O'Toole or someone has made you mm -hmm. just a beautiful set of iconography. Yeah. And 
nobody knows what it means. And we have yeah. to dig through the rule yeah. book every yeah. time we want to know what one of those icons yeah. means. 100%. Why can't we just get an icon reference sheet mm -hmm. with all the mm -hmm. icons in your game? Yep. What they might mean mm -hmm. and go from there. I shouldn't have to go to BGG. Yes. Find your game. Yes. Find a fan made icon sheet. Print it off and store it in your box because your box has too much space in it. I shouldn't have to go to <laughs> Google for quick answers to something that should be in your rule book. Yeah. The best example I can think of of this implemented in practice mm -hmm. is Voidfall. Voidfall is very good. Voidfall does really good with the yes. iconography. Yes. And there's a lot of iconography. There's a lot. In that it's game. it's almost the biggest challenge of learning that game is learning the iconography, but at least when you yeah. learn one symbol. There's like six yeah. other symbols that are intuitive from that. Another thing is if your game follows a standard like round turn structure mm -hmm. where you have to do things in a certain order, include yep. a help card that outlines 100%. what that order is. Yes. Distilled yes. did that really well. There's like mm -hmm. a turn order structure thing. A lot yep. of games do it well, but yes. games that don't do it, like you really notice it. Yes, you really, really, really do. Like set the bar hot, just be better. If it costs me an extra buck, I'm fine with it. So Jeffrey, yes. number six mm -hmm. is when a board game box just has a really crappy insert. Now I'm mm -hmm. thankful it mm -hmm. has an insert, yes. but it sucks yes. when it's crappy. Sometimes the box is too small. Oh, totally. What I mean to say Absolutely. is you're gonna hate this because you love this game. Heat pedal to the metal. The way they designed the box was like they expected more expansions to be included in that yes. box. Yes, yes. But then the box doesn't fit their newest expansion. Yeah, which is their first so, expansion. So like, what are you yeah. guys doing? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Also, when uh, when the insert has spaces for cards, but mm -hmm. the cards wouldn't fit if they're sleeved. Yeah, oh god, yes. I don't mean yes. fit as in like the. 100%. I don't mean fit the space. I mean fit the size. Absolutely. Like an yep. like a recessed space. Yep. yep. Um, but also just the space. Like, uh, I know the Nemesis board games are really tight. If you sleeve mm -hmm. them, you can't sleeve them. There's a lot of stuff. Very there. tight. Yeah. yeah. Just make space for that. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and if you can't, then don't do the insert. You know what I yes. mean? Because people are going to yes. have to replace it anyway. Yeah. You're just wasting more plastic. Yeah. I'd rather have PVC cards that don't have to sleep in the first place. 100%. Hey, we came full circle. Yeah. That was number six. Just improve your inserts. Yes. Like, yes. some games, like heavy Euro games that have a zillion components really need inserts. Sometimes mm -hmm. they do an insert, but it's like this half ass that's just bins to put stuff into, and like there's not enough bins for the You don't want to spend components. 10 to 15 minutes just sorting your yeah, little like, like pieces. Like, or no. I want to spend 50 minutes sorting my pieces and only ever do it once. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's how absolutely. I want it to be. Absolutely. But yeah, anyway, that was number six. So, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. on to number five. Yes. And the biggest thing I think that everyone in the world complains about when it comes to hardcore board games. This is such a common complaint. Yeah, is that you never know how long the game takes yep. based on the box. My friends tell me that I lie to them all the time about how long a game is. Because <laughs> you need the box, the box is like 45 minutes. Yeah, and you play 100%. the game three, three hours of yeah. detail. The time should be accurate, not based off of necessarily your first time ever playing or learning the game, but it shouldn't be an example of how long it takes to like a group of people if you're who professional. played yeah. it 20, like, 30 times. If it's your fifth time playing yeah. it and you play it once a quarter, Yep. You should have that time written on the board. Um, the next one is a complaint that is, I want to say, mostly eradicated now, but when it happens, it's infuriating. It's mm. usually in older stuff. Mm -hmm. It's when games have matching card backs yes. for different yes. cards. Yeah, a lot like of games, for different the, purposes. people have gotten better And that's number this. four, by the way. So yes. number four is games that have matching card backs for different mm -hmm. cards. For completely different things that are in completely different stacks. Yeah. And I'm not even like, talking yeah. like a deck building game like Dune Imperium, yep. which like has like a little yep. icon to tell you the differences in cards. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like the cards serve a totally different function yep. and still have the same card back. Resource cards versus action cards, for yeah. example. Or if you have followers in a game or companions or something like yeah. that, they should have different backs. Or if it's like, I know there's a couple trick taking games that like the the scorecards and like the player cards have the same back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It just makes it more difficult to sift through. Yeah. Like, I, I don't get it. Especially when you don't have an insert that keeps everything nice and organized and separate. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, the next one is continuing on the card train. This is number mm -hmm. three. So now we're in the top yep. three. We're in the big leagues. And before that, I asked our group chat mm -hmm. for some stuff. Yes. And uh, they gave us some things which we're going to use as honorable mentions. Yep. Um, stand Eclipse that ruin the cardboard. 100%. A great pull. Yep. Kingmaker mechanics that prevent the game from ending, like yeah. Munchkin and stuff. Yep. Munchkin's the theme. like most egregious um, example. Warping this. boards. This yes. is fair. Yes. This is Sean. This is from, I mean, Last Light has this problem. A lot yep. of boards that like slot together, like a mm -hmm. puzzle, mm -hmm. kind of have this problem. Well, and sometimes what you have to do, especially when the game's newer, which is a little bit more understandable, but you have to bend yes. it the opposite way to get it to sit flat. And sometimes yeah, those boards break. Not good. Right? Um, screen capped or AI generated artwork. 
this is a whole topic and a discussion yeah. in and of itself, and we might actually do a video in the future totally. about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a new developing thing that could be a really big game changer, not necessarily in a in a good way. Yes. In the industry. Um, also, the last one, and I don't. This is deluxification. Uh, mm -hmm. This is from Seth. It was blank meeples. Yeah. So like when the meeple doesn't yes. have like screen printing on it. I mean, that, that costs money. Yeah. So I understand why that would be the case. But, but yeah, if you have a ton of different kinds of meeples yeah, in a game, yeah. like Dwellings is a game that does it well. I would say right? different meeples looking too similar yes. is more common yes. of an issue for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So into our top three, Jeff. Yes. Excellent. Number three mm -hmm. is when you have to like look at a market of cards on a board. 100%. But the writing this is one on the of my market biggest is complaint. too small. Like you can't yep. read or tell what the markets, like the cards do and like mm -hmm. the table's mm -hmm. big and like people are reading from across the table and stuff. And, yeah. and and even more so like sections of the board that are not legible. Yes. Like that yes. becomes pretty tough, yeah. right? When like there's areas of the board or worker placement locations that you can't see the icon mm -hmm. or there's mm -hmm. sometimes you have to put cards like out on the board as yeah. locations and yeah. you can't see the locations. That's always tough. Like I shouldn't have to get up and go like this. Yeah. And like to actually see what those cards yeah, are. Yeah, I think if if like uh, I mean Marvel United, I think did this really well. I don't know if you've played that. Not yet. Designed sure. by Eric M. Lang, who's going to be in our next. Yeah. Video about he basically it just uses the icons on the cards, mm -hmm. and the icons mm -hmm. just mean like like certain strength or power or whatever. Yep. But like I wish more cards did that, where like instead of keywords, they used icons that were super yes. legible. And then you and have then a you saw the reference. effect. Yeah, you saw the effect yeah. of the icon. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the the game we just played, Rats of Wish, started that. Yeah, game. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. That was a really well designed game. I yes, like totally. Yeah. Anyway, that's number three. Mm -hmm. Number two is something that uh, I feel like there's not a great solution for, but it also bugs me when it happens. One hundred percent. When there's a shared yes. victory. Oh yeah, I, I, I you need curl. to have tiebreakers. Not that I need to win. No, I just 100%. don't want to tie. Yes. I want yeah. to clear victor. I want to go into BG stats. Everybody's and put the disappointed. crown next yeah. to one person. Everybody's just disappointed. Not about it. Shared victories. Let's let's establish a tiebreaker. 100 percent The tiebreaker yeah. can be whoever is breathing harder in the last round. The tiebreaker can be <laughs> like, like, how do you have such stupid ways to decide who goes first? Who hasn't played this game before would be a good tiebreaker. Yeah. Like, how do you have such dumb ways for who goes first? Oh, God, ways to yeah. determine who yeah, goes first. Well, yeah, yeah, whoever's birthday yeah. was on the last Tuesday of 1996. Who who last like, climbed a mountain? Yeah, like but like you can't you can't break a tie. Like come no, on. no. Why no, don't you just say the person who wins the tie is the person who we picked to go first? <laughs> even rock paper scissors. Yeah, even honestly, though that would be really frustrating, but at least be. it's something. Yeah, that'd be our next like, peppy. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, tiebreakers, please. Board yes, game companies yes. stop sharing victories. Yeah. Okay, Jeffrey. Yes. Number one. Mm, what pisses us biggest, off the most? Pet peeve. And I know everyone's <laughs> dealt with this. This is when you go to set up a game mm -hmm. and you're trying to get it going. It's the first time you're playing it. Yeah, you especially want to punch for the first it, you time. You organize it. You yeah. get ready to set it up. And the setup is on page like 50. Like you're hunting yeah. for the setup. Or it's across like several pages and there's too much in between. Yeah, or like to set up this part. Yep. And then they try to introduce yep. you to that part. Yeah. Then yeah. set up this part. They try to introduce just, just let us set up the damn game. A hundred percent. Set the game 100%. up. Clear setup instructions. Yep. Preferably, as we said earlier, a separate mm -hmm. setup sheet. Yes. A sheet yes. that includes a setup and mm -hmm. tear down. The one side is the setup. And if your if your setup for your game doesn't fit on mm -hmm. one like foot by a foot page, change your setup. Like yeah. what the heck yeah, are yeah, we yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah, 100%. So set up on one side, yep. tear down on the other. If user setup is different, like player setup is different, mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. set up like a different separate card for how players set yep, up, yep. included on their board, like Root mm -hmm. does or something. Like just fix this UI because 100%. 90% of playing a game is interfacing with the game. That's how yeah. you, that's yeah. actually the you user experience. The user interacting experience matters with the components, so much. With the board, with the pieces, with the box, everything. It's very important. But set up on page 15 just isn't allowed to happen. Ever. There are games that I would table far more often if it weren't for the setup. Totally. And the teardown. Totally. It takes too long. A thousand percent agree. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's it. Mm -hmm. What pisses you off about Let board us games? Know. Signing out.